talk about the new share option in Final Cut 7. Now, I'm not sure if we're going to have time today, but hopefully Jesse later is going to give us their super duper secret recipe for exporting here because everybody knows who's tried that exporting is tough. At best, it's a process of trial and error, even if you're a genius. You never know. So one of the really great things about Final Cut 7 is that they've created this new share option. Let me go ahead and select a sequence here. And I can even right click or go under the file menu and just choose share. And there we go. Here's some share options. I'm just going to get rid of these. Okay. Here's the share window. And this is kind of like a little tiny piece of compressor has been gifted to us right here inside of Final Cut. Okay. So now you don't really have to be very knowledgeable about compression. You just need to know how you want to share your video with people. What do you want to do? Do you want to create a DVD? You click DVD. And then you might notice, once I select DVD, there's this little checkbox here. I can check create a DVD. Little tray pops up asking me if some information about my DVD and so on. If I want some information about the format that this is going to create in the export, click this little letter I. I can get info on the format that it's going to create. Now, I'm not going to customize this. I'm just going to click OK and let it export. If I do want to customize this any further, I can choose to send it to compressor. If I feel comfortable in that environment, I can open it up there and tweak it a bit more. But the idea is that these don't require customizing. As good old Steve Jobs says, they just work. And in my experience so far, they, they pretty much do. I'll show you what else we have here. By the way, you can add other items, you can create a render queue, which is really nice because that way you can sort of compare a couple of different render options, get more than one thing done at a time. One of the very exciting things is that you can actually work on Final Cut while you are exporting in the background, which is pretty cool. Of course, your system has to be kind of a, a powerhouse to handle all that exporting. It takes a lot out of a system. Here in our drop down, other than DVD, we have Apple TV, Blu ray, you are able to create a Blu-ray compliant H.264. Obviously, there's no Blu-ray burner in here. Okay, so you have to have the hardware attached. So if you check create Blu-ray disc there, you better have a Blu-ray burner <laughs> attached, okay? Other than that, we have YouTube. Let me click YouTube. You'll notice under YouTube, all of these guys carry little after export actions. For YouTube, we can publish this to YouTube after we export. Okay, username, password, and so on. You have your Apple ProRes and your QuickTime H.264 options under here as well. If none of these are doing it for you, click Other. And under the Apple folder, you have all kinds of other stuff. Apple devices, H.264 for Apple, iPod, and so on. More DVD groups according to length of your DVD and so on. Formats, audio MPEG 1, 2, and 4, some QuickTime, and other workflows for format conversions. There is your standard definition conversions, DV and TSC, if that's what you need. So this is the very awesome new share option. This is one of the reasons you're going to want to update to Final Cut 7. We'll give you a chance to ask some questions about that at the end of the talk as well. Okay, the next thing I want to move on to are the new speed tools in Final Cut Pro 7. Now, in Final Cut 6, you know, you were able to do some speed and it had some unintended effects in your timeline, kind of make things go down in your timeline, pull things up in your timeline. And you also had a time remap tool in Final Cut 6, which has been replaced by the speed tool in 7. That time remap tool was actually not so easy to use in Final Cut 6. Um, not so intuitive. And this is one of the things that they have really just made better in Final Cut 7. Now, just as a side note, the thing about Final Cut 7 is that what they did, instead of adding a whole bunch of new bells and whistles, is they made things a lot better. Some of these new features are really great, like the share and the speed you're going to see. but what they did was make it work even better. And that's what you're going to see in the speed tools here. OK. So here I have 
a clip of a boat, and I'll just play it. There's a boat, right? And the boat, let's say, is moving a little too slowly for my tastes, right? I'd like to cover more ground with this boat. So I'd like it to go faster. So I'll do a speed change on it. I can select that clip. I don't have to select it, but just to be sure I can. I can use a shortcut or go to the Modify menu and change speed is the option. Command J is the shortcut. And we get the dialog box. And this dialog box is a little different than the one we're used to seeing in Final Cut 6. We have these little start and end thingies here. Well, this allows us now to sort of give our speed changes a slightly more organic look. Okay, so it'll sort of ease into its maximum rate of speed as it changes into speed. Okay, now what's another thing that's really new here are these check marks here. And the one I want to focus on is the one that says ripple sequence. Okay, it is on by default, and I'm going to click OK. Oops, you know what? I forgot to check. I forgot to change the speed. Let's make it 200%. Click OK. Now, one second. Let me lock my audio tracks in case there's something going on here. Okay. And did anyone happen to see what happened to the length of my clip? Did anybody notice? It got shorter, right? which means everything in my sequence rippled up, right? Okay, so the boat's going faster, that's for sure. But something's changed in my sequence. Things got rippled up, that clip is shorter. So I'll undo that and I'll hit Command J to open up that speed dialog again. And that's all about this ripple sequence checkbox. It is on by default, which means it behaves just as it did in Final Cut 6. Okay, so no surprises. Now, if we don't want that to happen, we don't want our clip to change length, we're gonna say no, don't ripple the sequence. Just turn that off. Let me change my speed to 200. And there you see the speed change was created, but the clip stayed exactly the same length. Everybody got that? Good. Last thing is the new speed tool. The speed tool shares the same button with the slip and slide tools. Looks like a little clock. And man, this one was not easy to use in Final Cut 6 or previous versions. It was kind of hard to understand. And now it's pretty neat. I can easily just click and drag at an edit point. And when I let go, you can see that the speed of both clips on either side has changed. It's like I stretched one out and it got kind of slower and longer. At the same time, the one right next to it kind of got squeezed shorter and faster. So it's like we're stretching them out to make them go slower and squeezing them to make them go faster. And you see it's affecting both sides of this edit point. Okay? Other way to go about this is if I'm careful and I just drag from one side or the other, I can affect the, the speed of just one clip without affecting the speed of the other. And that is about it for our speed tools. SSS is the shortcut for speed. That's about it, and I think we can open it up for questions.